Hey there, everyone. Happy Monday. Thanks for joining me for a craft night with friends. My name is Alyssa from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for beginners. And I'm here every weeknight, Monday through Friday at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's a time that we can relax and craft together. So we are continuing on our ABC stitch along. We are going through the whole alphabet of letters and cute little animals. And we are doing the letter V this week, which is the Viper. <laughs> so I could draw a cute little snake, basically. Uh, I had to get fit. So, uh, <laughs> all right, let's uh, get going. Let's transfer this to our fabric and start stitching. All right, everyone. So thank you again for popping in here tonight. Let's, oh, I still have the unicorn. <laughs> unicorn in the hoop from uh, last week. We used all that uh, Nishiki Ito uh, shiny thread. So I'm going to take this out of the hoop because we're going to use the hoop for the Viper tonight. Grab our needle minder and we'll pop this guy right out. Okay, so he can go on our finished pile, which is fabulous. And let's open up our Viper pattern and get, get this transferred. So I'm gonna grab, like here's the cover on the back of that has the, um, our like stitch instructions where everything goes, back stitch and satin stitch it looks like for this one. So I'm gonna let that I'm gonna just have that off to the side so I can see it. And then we have the traceable pattern and the iron on pattern, and then just some embroidery instructions. Uh, I'm gonna go with the iron pattern again today. Oop, don't need my plastic. The first thing again is I'm gonna trim off the text. Oh, thanks Arlene. Arlene says, hello, hello, love your sweater. I recently <laughs> have gotten a couple new sweaters and cardigans and I'm testing them all out. So this one looked a little um, more like celebratory than I thought. I thought it was just gonna be like a fun casual sweater, but it's got like sparkles and all this stuff in. So it's it was a little bit more like a holiday sweater than I thought it was gonna be, but I'm wearing it. I was cold today. I needed a nice big sweater. All right, so I'm putting down a piece of uh, um, a paper down on like a, what do you even call this? Oh my gosh, just like a paper on my pressing mat. Paper towel, geez, that's what they're called. <laughs> paper towel on my pressing mat just to protect my pressing mat from the iron-on ink uh, because, you know, this weave has little openings uh, and uh, the ink could go through all the way to that. So uh, just protecting it with that paper towel. All right, so I have my iron going. Let's just preheat my fabric a bit. Just heating it up. And then I'm gonna place the iron-on pattern uh, face down. So the ink is gonna go down and I'm just kind of centering it. I'm just eyeballing it. And then let's set the iron on top. I don't want to wiggle too much because I don't want to accidentally wiggle the fabric, but I do want to check, go a little back. I'm just checking to see if it's transferred. Oh yeah, we're, we're doing good here. There we go. Perfect, that'll be great. And uh, I can use this transfer a, a few more times. So I'm gonna just have this on hand. We'll save that. And look at him, he's so cute, little snaky. Okay. So I can get rid of all this stuff. Let's get him in the hoop and start uh, start stitching. Sylvia's like, wow, you're on V. I know, how did that happen, people? We are already on the letter V of this. I mean, we have to do all the quilting and sewing and all that yet. And we'll get to that um, some more. But we are, we made it through almost the whole alphabet already. That's just nutso, isn't it? I mean, just a reminder that like, oh my gosh, it's the end of the year already. So we should be done like WX and then YZ. So two months, we should be done stitching. So by end of February, geez, February, 2023, uh, we'll be done stitching this and then we'll just be working on the assembly. So like the quilting of it, and that'll be really fun. We'll get a revisit at all. We'll do a bunch of hand stitching 
to get all the pieces together. It'll be nice. That'll be, that'll be a little bit of a change. We'll be doing a little less embroidery then. Uh, next week, we do have um, the Embroidery of the Month stitch along. So this is like a little earlier than usual. We, we moved everything a little earlier than usual this, this month just because it's all the holiday stuff is coming up um, and we're all going to be busy. So uh, this will be next week, our Let It Snow design. That's what we'll be stitching, uh, stitching up. So there's still time this week to get the kit or the fabric only or the PDF pattern. Uh, sent to you, and you should have it on time to stitch it still. We'll be shipping again tomorrow. All right, and let's see, I got my little, my little strawberry tray. This is, we've been using the same sort of threads this whole entire project, so this is my tray dedicated to this project. We did have to add a few more colors that we ran out of, so those, those I ended up not wrapping, it looks like, onto any of my spools, but it'd be nice to, like, use, oh, these are, like, Ones that we're almost out of that I just have sitting here, I guess, on deck. Ooh, there's all my water soluble markers hanging out here. Um, all right, so ideally, I'd like to try and use some of these ones on the spools yet, but we don't have to do that either. I'm just kind of curious what we have left here. It would be nice to do, like, stick to a green, I think, for, for him. Like, I think he's kind of cute, just like green green like that. Um, so for greens, I do have this guy that we got fresh. Like a, this is a, a new skein of it, newish. And, and this guy too. We could do um, one of these greens for the outside. I kind of like this lighter one because in, in this line art, it's kind of that lighter color. And I think that's kind of cute. Uh, I do kind of like these light oranges too. Um, we could do a green and then we could do like all different colors for the satin stitches. So all these little uh, triangles on his back um, are all getting filled in. And we do have a bunch of, you know, spools of stuff left here. So we could, we could just kind of grab a few, see how that works. Maybe it's some sort of rainbowy type deal. Even like all these all these kind of reddish orangey colors together. I mean, we have a lot of those yet. I mean, with hardly anything on, um, you know, all that, those might be a nice little selection to fill in, fill in um, these back bits. We could even combine threads and stuff too, like we did that, that uh, like we did a couple times. So I'm gonna start out though tonight with, oh, that's a little piece, uh, with some outlining. So we'll do the back stitch for the outlines. Um, it's sometimes easier to do the satin stitch first, because then you don't have to, like the outlines will won't be in the way for for that. But I just feel like I am accomplishing more by getting an outline done. So I think let's just let's start with the outlines. That always just makes me feel better. So let's do that. Okay. So I'm gonna get my three strands out of here and just isolating them one at a time and pulling them out. And we will start stitching with the three strands. All right, there we are. Oh, and I'm like, where's my needle? I have put it here already. So let's let's uh, put these back together and let's use the thread conditioner tonight. So I have um, we have a, a box like a a gift box going out this year. It's the first time we've done a gift box, and it's a collaboration uh, between Sea to Snow Candle Co. and and us Penguin and Fish. That is. Uh, Sea to Snow is my brother's and his girlfriend's uh, candle company, and they have made special for us a floss scent thread conditioner. It's in the flavor, um, the scent Alpen Glow, which is the same scent as the candle from the box. Uh, the box has a candle from them plus an embroidery that matches 
It's, uh, I have the finished one of the embroidery right here. So we got this super cute Elp and Glow uh, embroidery. And then we have the Elp and Glow candle, a cute little purple scissors, and the Elp and Glow uh, floss scent. And it's, they the candle and the floss scent both have um, just like a warm, citrusy flavor. They're just, it's just like a really comforting citrus. It's not like a harsh, like, kitchen cleaning citrus. It's just a yummy, yummy warm, almost holiday, but works for any time citrus. And the thread conditioner is just going to kind of hold my threads together a little bit and um, just protect it from just going through the fabric a bunch of times. That causes a lot of friction, which can wear on the thread. And this helps with that. And it just makes the whole area smell nice <laughs> when you use it. And that's what makes Stitching a little bit nicer when you have your nice scent around for that too. So anyway, I got it now. The floss scent. Let's use it. Okay. Um, let's just start at the smiley face and work my way all the way around. I think. Um, so I'm gonna do that thing where I just start with a little piece dangling out and a stitch left to do. So, um, like here's. Here's a stitch right there. I'm going to just let that be. And then I'm going to leave enough thread hanging out here to finish that stitch and to weave in my ends later. So this is my way of not having to do a knot at the beginning. What I'm going to do is later, I'm going to weave this end into the backs of stitches. But right now I don't have the back any backs of stitches, so it's hanging out. And we are like now creating some backs to stitches. That makes sense. It'll make sense in a little bit. Oh, Jennifer's asking when I'm working on the Splendid Sampler 2 again. Oh my gosh. Yeah, we haven't. Um, I've kind of been gone on all our free weeks lately, haven't I? And that's when we've been doing the Splendid Sampler 2. I definitely have not forgotten about it. <laughs> uh, we need to work on that again for sure. Um, but man, I don't know if it's going to be till the new year, which is literally like, what, like three weeks away? Is it even three weeks away? I don't know. Um, but yeah, we need to get on that again. I'm just like, my avail availability has been, has been all over the place um, during this like Thanksgiving or Halloween really till now. <laughs> Holiday. Uh, season, so I know I've been uh, I've been on and off and kind of sporadic and lately. Uh, but yeah, we need to finish that. I have a feeling early twenty twenty three is going to be a whole lot of trying to get quilts done. We might have to do some longer sessions where we just try and crank some of this out. We'll have to see. I mean, even if we could just finish all the blocks and have them done and um, then do the quilting and all that separate, I don't know, it'd be at least something checked off. Oh, Jennifer says, oh, I do love watching you do embroidery, but my eyes are not too good. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. So Lisa says, New Year, you'll have auntie duties. I know, I wish they lived a little closer. They're, they're kind of a hefty drive away, but um, I think they're coming around for Christmas-ish time again. Um, so hopefully we'll get a pop down there and see the baby. Baby again. I think we'll be at John's parents. For a lot of that time, though. We will see. Oh, man, you guys, we we are in the process of getting all new appliances. 
which is annoying. We finally let them all basically break. <laughs> so now we're trying to get like, you know, the least expensive things with the least amount of work. So we still basically just went to Best Buy and, and got stuff we didn't like, Facebook Marketplace or anything like that, um, to find new appliances. But the oven finally stopped working and the repair was gonna be almost as much uh, as like, getting a new oven and our dishwasher was already not cleaning <laughs> very well anymore and making a mess. And our refrigerator has been freezing everything in the back of the fridge. So we can only put stuff in the front. So <clears throat> it was time, but we got, we got the fridge already, but we already have to return it because it is so loud. I don't know if you guys can hear it in the background, but it, it's like just this, buzzing noise and uh, um oh god it's just an annoying buzzing noise and every once in a while it'll get quiet but the buzzing is way more than it should be and so we are just gonna replace it with the same kind and they're like eh the other kind will probably be buzzing like that too so john had to pick out a whole different one and i don't know Took forever to empty all that out, and now we're gonna have to do that again, and whatever, but it is what it is. But it'll be nice to have, like, it'll be nice to bake again, <laughs> since we can. I mean, we have the stove top, but the, the um, oven part doesn't work, and it'll be nice to have, like, clean dishes again, even though I suppose we could just do the dishes, but by hand. <sighs> but anyway. Kept the microwave, that's not broken. But yeah, Sylvia says, what a pain. Yeah, it, that's just all it is, it's just like, what a pain. But we did wait until <laughs> they were all broken and they all came with our house. And when we bought the house, which was like, I don't know, at least 12 years ago. And uh, they definitely weren't new when we got the house. So <laughs> for them to have lasted that long, I suppose that's fine. But to not be able to like, roast any vegetables anymore that was kind of kind of the deal breaker <laughs> so finally finally did it Ooh, congrats jennifer that's exciting new little boy Ooh, a great nan oh that's exciting Happy Monday, Amy. So when the, the fridge that we have now, the one that's buzzing like mad right now, when it's not buzzing, like it turns off every once in a while, but like not for like every, like it's buzzing for hours and then maybe it's quiet for like, I don't know, a teeny bit of time. But when it's quiet, oh my God, it's so nice. We haven't, like our old refrigerator, didn't buzz nearly as loud as this, but it still always had like a hum, right? But when this hum, this new fridge, when, when it's twice as loud buzzing goes away and it's just a normal cold fridge without any sound, oh, that is just the nicest thing we haven't had. Like the only time we notice how loud our house is with all the humming and buzzing is when the power goes out and then it's like, oh wow. Yeah, that fridge was loud and now it's even like louder. So it's 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 a little grating. But we'll get it done. Oh, Lynn says my tenant's new fridge was making a loud sound and it was a part in the freezer fan that had to be replaced. Oh, interesting. Replaced for free because under warranty. Yeah, so that's the problem. Um we got since we were getting a bunch of appliances. <sighs> To install each one was like a zillion extra dollars, especially with the the um, gas oven because there's plumbing, gas plumbing involved. And then same with the dishwasher, there's like plumbing involved. So those were a bunch extra. So we got like their special, I don't know, whatever, yearly care plan or whatever that's supposed to take care of all that, um, all those fixes and stuff. But then, so this refrigerator that we got, this new one is a Whirlpool. 
And we're like, okay, we need this fix. So we, we got it scheduled for like a guy on Sunday or whatever to come to fix it. But then he called this past Sunday yesterday and was like, uh, we can't actually come fix Whirlpools. Like Whirlpools force you, Whirlpool company forces like Best Buy and wh whoever their vendors are to use Whirlpool vendors for the first year. And then Best Buy can do it after that year. But after the first year, like that's what we were paying this extra stupid thing for, for them to be able to make fixes within that first year, which was not true if with a Whirlpool. And uh, Whirlpool was the problem in the first place because that's who we were going to have come fix our oven when it went down. And we were like, oh, let's just fix our current refrigerator and stuff too. And... Uh, just for them to come out was like a couple hundred dollars and that was before parts and them to do it so it's that's why we ended up just getting new ones so i don't know so the guy the fix it guy on the phone said to just try and replace it the same one and see if the next one hums but then john went to the place Best Buy again, and they're like, eh, the new one's probably gonna hum like that too, so just get a whole different brand. So, like, what the heck, people? Annoying. Uh, Bigfoot Home said, do you only sell kits? Uh, we sell kits and digital patterns, so I don't sell any, like, finished, finished items, really. Um, Sassy One says, uh, question how do you transfer the material and then embroidery? Uh, so in this case, uh, these are some of my older designs and some of my old designs have, um, these are old paper patterns. Uh, this one had an iron on transfer directly in, in it. So this one I just ironed on, um, you know, 20 minutes ago or whatever when I came on. And uh, so you, you preheat your fabric by like just ironing it to heat it up and then you place it on and then put the iron on top for about five seconds or so. And then that, that transfers the design right on. Uh, if, your, if your like kit or pattern does not come with an iron on transfer, uh, then uh, I would suggest just tracing it. So if there's like another pattern in here, you can put it up to like a bright light or, you know, this one with this fabric I can see right through. And what I typically do is I use a water soluble marker or just a, just a like mechanical pencil and I'll go trace over it. Um, I'll tape it to like, I'll tape it to, you know, my surface or like the window or something and then, then tape the fabric right on top. So just tracing is probably the cheapest, easiest way to go. All of our kits, um, all of our new kits, the ones that aren't on clearance, all of our kits have uh, the design pre-printed on the fabric now. But yeah, for like digital patterns, like the PDF patterns, uh, the, the um, cheapest, easiest way is to just trace, print it out and then trace the design. Some people actually trace it directly from their iPad. Um, I've seen that before where they're actually putting the fabric right on the iPad and tracing it. Um, the other way to do it is to print, oh my gosh, it just went off. <laughs> I don't know if you guys heard that ship. I think I have my microphone, so it cuts out low sounds like that, but like, oh my God, now it's so relaxing. The refrigerator just went off. It, it went, it's not buzzing anymore. Like I said, it does that every once in a while. It'll just, it'll be like normal now. Ah, oh, that's so nice. <laughs> it really is nice when it goes off. Oh my gosh. That's what it's supposed to sound like all the time. But Lynn, I think it might be what you're saying. Like it's just some stupid part in the freezer fan. Like, cause we're thinking it's in the freezer, but like, I don't know, just to get someone to come out and replace it or look at it is going to be a zillion dollars. So I don't know. I don't know. Just annoying. Uh, but yeah, so the other way <laughs> to jump back, so I totally got distracted by my quiet refrigerator. Uh, but the other way I like transferring a design is to use, let me grab it here, is to use a product called uh, Stick and Stitch. And it's by Sulky is the brand. And the nice thing is it's, this is like a sticker, a clear sticker, eh, kind of 
like a sort of a see-through sticker. You can, it's like tracing paper. You can trace onto it. There's like a rough side and then just the paper backing. Uh, but you can print right onto this uh, in your inkjet or your laser printer. So if you get a PDF, you can just print the design right out there and you don't have to deal with tracing or anything, which saves time. Uh, and then it just sticks onto your fabric like a sticker and uh, you stitch right through it and then you wash it off with water when you're done. And this, so this is fabulous if you're using like a dark fabric, um, for example, where it would be difficult to trace or like a fabric with like a big pattern behind it where it might be difficult to trace or an untraceable fabric. Like if you put it on a felt or something like that. Um, or a, or a sweater or a sweatshirt or something, then, then that stick and stitch is super fabulous. The only, the only thing with that is you're stitching through more than one thing, so you're not going to see like the real color of the background and stuff like that um, until, you, until you wash it off when you're done. But as far as not having to trace the design at all and, you know, just being able to like stick it onto a sweatshirt or something, it's awesome. He's just really like a weight gets lifted off of you without that buzzing. <laughs> oh God. So silly. like a teeny tiny bit of torture having that like high pitched hum. <laughs> oh God. Anyway, um, kind of wondering about that freezer fan thing, but I don't know. We already got another one ordered. It's coming, coming on Thursday. So they're replacing it on Thursday. Man, they delivered this one though. 6.30 a.m. on, oh, when did they do that? Like on a Monday or something. Nah, we didn't have it for a week already. Was it a Sunday? Maybe Sunday or Saturday. I think it was a weekend, like Saturday. No, I think it was Sunday. So like Sunday at like 6.30 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> They delivered this thing with no warning whatsoever. And luckily I hadn't slept well, so I was, I happened to be up, which is unusual. So I was able to get the door and stuff, but dang, <laughs> that's an early freaking delivery. Uh, and we, we hadn't emptied out the fridge because, you know, they had said like, oh, like, you know, somewhere between like eight and 11 or whatever, they're going to come. But we, and we were going to be notified, but that did not happen. And they came at 6.30. So we hadn't emptied out the fridge or anything. So we're like doing that while they're getting stuff together. I don't know. It's been, been a thing, but like, it is nice to have a fridge that doesn't freeze everything. So that's positive. <laughs> You're probably going to hear tons of appliance talk in the next couple of weeks because next week we get the oven and dishwasher. It'll be nice to be able to roast vegetables again. Ooh, this guy's stuck in here. Why aren't you coming out? Yeah, like, what the heck? Are you knotted somewhere? Oh, you do have a little... Oh, man, I'm just making a mess now. The little end is caught somewhere in here. I'm going to just have to cut this, I think. I don't know what's happening. Let's just trim this from the needle. We're done with um, weaving in the end here. Weird. Okay. Why do I have four strands here? I don't know what's going on. Let's trim it. It's good enough. Snip. All right, let's go back to um here and we're, i'm gonna finish that stitch right this is that stitch that i left at the beginning there we go and now i have stitches that i can weave this one into uh we didn't have stitches before 
Amy says non-functioning appliances are very stressful. Yeah, I'm surprised we let it go this long because like I said, our refrigerator, old refrigerator for years, actually maybe ever since we had it, has been freezing. You have to have everything in the front of the shelves because if you have anything towards the back, all that's going to freeze. Um, so that we should have gotten, and that and the dishwasher, we probably should have gotten replaced a long time ago, but um, they were bearable. <laughs> we managed, but without having the gas, without having the, um, the, uh, the pilot light isn't lighting our, our oven. And not having a working oven, that's been tricky because we use the oven so much. I'm going to split these three again just to get rid of the twist a little bit. Um, and then we'll run it through the thread conditioner again. This is the other half of the six strands, so three more strands. And we, we YouTube, like if we could fix it ourselves, but it was getting a little hairy, like, eh, if we turn this thing too much, then too much gas is gonna come out and things we kind of just didn't wanna, we didn't trust ourselves to like do correctly. So we're like, eh, maybe we'll call a guy to fix it. But then that's what ended up being like, it's gonna cost that much to just come out. And then that's even before fixing anything. And so we're like, eh, maybe it's just time to look at new appliances. But yeah, I don't know, new appliances aren't necessarily better than the old ones, it seems. But dang, right now, without, without that extra hum, I don't know how long it'll last, like three more minutes or something, without that extra hum happening in the fridge, like now it's where it's supposed to be. It's almost like it's trying to cool itself down, but like very loudly and like all day long which obviously should not be happening. Um, but now that it's off, it's so nice. <laughs> oh, and he says, gas scares me. Everyone who cooks on gas loves it, but I'll stick to my electric. Yeah, we're just doing gas because that's what the old one was that came with the house. And we have gas for the dryer, our clothes dryer, so. Yeah, it scares me when it clicks too too much and doesn't light because you know it's just like pumping out gas. And I have heard that like you're supposed to like have the vent on whenever you use the gas. And honestly, I'm not sure our vent vents anywhere like the like the microwave vent. I don't know. This house is pretty shady. I'm thinking in a lot of those ways. But yeah, I know people like to, I think John said this a couple times, um, on the gas range, like um, blackening uh, peppers and stuff like that right on there. So that's kind of fun. What I like about the gas is I can see the height of the flame and then that, I don't know, helps me know for sure, like, how much heat's coming, like if it's on medium and that sort of thing. I feel like I, I can regulate it better, but I don't know. It's just what came with the house and so we've been getting used to it. We didn't have gas before then. This new oven has a fifth um, burner in the middle and it has a, um, what do you call it? Just those flat, well, like a griddle, like it has a griddle on there. Um, so, and we make eggs like almost every day. <laughs> so I'm kind of, kind of interested to see if we can fry eggs right on that griddle. So that'd be kind of cool. <laughs> Your Amy says our vent circulates, recirculated back out into the same spot. So I'm a, a little nervous that that's what ours is doing. I should really like mega investigate that sometime. I'm thinking. <laughs> I 
Exactly, Arlene. Arlene saying saying the same thing. So switching from gas to electric many years ago was hard to get used to. When you turn the gas down, there's an immediate response where electric there isn't. Oh, that's true. Oh, yeah, that's true, because electric would kind of have to probably cool a little bit. And just like there's a visual, like it's it's visible, the flame gets less, right, with, with gas, though. Oh, no, Jennifer says, uh, my stove has that griddle, and I think I've used it twice since we've owned it, like three years now. So <laughs> that I'm a little worried about that, but... Um, the other one that we were looking at had just like a fifth burner in the middle. Like they all have like this middle burner now, it seems. Um, and I'm like, okay, even if we don't use the griddle, I can at least set my spoon on it or set my, my spatula there. Whereas when it had that middle burner without the griddle, um, I wouldn't be able to set my spatula on 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 the open griddle or on the open um burner. Uh so I figured, eh, even if we don't use that griddle part, we can use it as a table. <laughs> oh, that's a good idea. Jennifer says it's more handy for keeping a side dish warm while finishing other other parts of the dinner. Ooh, I had not thought of that. That makes a lot of sense. Ooh, I like that a lot. Yeah. Okay. I like that. The other nice thing about this new oven compared to like our, our old one that we have now, at least for the, the top part, uh, it's all level. I mean, it's all, it's all burners. So they all have like, it's all just like the metal things that you set stuff on, but all those metal uh, like cages are all level with everything. So like the griddle and the cages and everything is level. So you could slide a pot like all over the place. Versus now we just have like the little, the four little, you know, cages that go above the fire. And so you wouldn't be able to slide a big pot of soup from one spot to the other. You'd have to like lift it up and stuff, which, you know, you would anyway, but this, I don't know. A neat feature that we don't have now. <laughs> we kind of went for The cheapest we could. No bells and whistles on anything. Um, you know, the fridge is still the freezer on top, fridge on the bottom, which I know is old school, but those are cheaper and stuff. We figure, eh. I don't know if we really want to invest mega stuff in our, our little kitchen here, so. Making it functional again, and hopefully they last another 12 years. <laughs> That's the plan. Even though this one that we got is not going to last three days. <laughs> We're already replacing it, but the fridge. But it's still being quiet right now, and, and if it was like this all the time, it'd be lovely. The bummer is the new one we're getting isn't as big. Um, but you know, they're all going to be bigger than what we were able to use before since we could only put stuff in the front half. Well, I definitely don't think we'll get all of this outlining done tonight. We've got a lot of surface area with all these squiggles and everything. Um, and then all these lines are the same. Oh, Jennifer's asking, are you having to wait forever to get it in stock? We, uh, on purpose, are only ordering ones that are in stock. Um, so we went online and we looked to, we went in person at Best Buy just to see what they had. And we're just like, let's just go with Best Buy and just be done. <laughs> we're trying to make this not take up tons of our time. And uh, um, we just looked on the floor to just kind of see what we were liking. And then afterwards, we. We um, went online and then, yeah, tons of them were out of stock or in back stock or whatever. So we we only we made sure to just order what the store near us had in, in stock. So. But yeah, it sounds like it's been taking forever for any of that stuff to get in. And, you know, ours is all mismatched, too. We did not get like a nice big set or anything like that. Um, you know, of all the same brand or like, you know, nice stuff. We just are like totally 
mismatching this whole kitchen up just with what's available and what fits in our space because we have like this cut out area for our fridge so like it's got to be like just a certain size and uh, you know so that was tricky too and you know we didn't want to I mean it goes from $700 to like $2,000 real quick <laughs> and we're like oh dang so you know we did not want to be in that up range at all uh so you know had some limitations there so we were just on the website forever like looking at the sizes just to like narrow it down between what was a, the right size and available and you know then we end up and the right price and like maybe two options at that point Oh, you have a hodgepodge of brands and colors too. Uh, Pinterest too. Yeah, exactly. At least I was, I mean, it's all ending up in the like, you know, just uh, black and um, stainless steel realm. But yeah, I mean, our, our um, oh, my light's being kind of funny. The, um, our dishwasher right now is black and we painted all the cupboards around it black so it kind of just like disappears and our new one is going to be silver so that'll be a little bit of a change um just you know deep interesting our our uh, <laughs> kitchen a little with that but whatever like i said we're getting the bare minimum that we can for having functional pieces again and it's time they were old if they weren't as old as they were, then we probably would have just gone with the repairs. Even though that was going to be expensive too, but... We knew this was going to happen around this time anyway. I just paint the, the cabinet silver now. We should just, uh... I guess actually now that I'm looking at it, our, our knobs are silver, so that kind of matches. We should just put like like black leafy decals or something on the on the new dishwasher so the dishwasher and oven don't come to like next week um but this week we still get the replacement for this fridge because fridges are easy we don't have any we didn't get an ice maker or water maker or anything in it so we don't really have water hookup so that makes it easy for them to just take one and deliver one Oh, Amy says, we're on our 12-year appliances. Shh, don't let them hear you. I know. <laughs> Ugh. Yep. I hear you. Gosh, and our poor washer and dryer we bought when we got the house. Those have been hanging on, too. But, you know, immediately we had a couple knobs break on those. So we've been using... Um, pliers to turn to turn the knobs on our washer and dryer like one broke on each a knob and John just finally um, went on Amazon and found some knobs replacement knobs which are like some of those are way more expensive than they should be like the real knobs anyway just dumb uh, but yeah so one we were able to put on and the other one is going to be a little trickier but yeah Getting things in order. Ooh, Vicky says there are large magnets for dishwashers. I have, um, it's really pretty. You have one that it's really pretty. I, I had not thought of that. That's interesting. Huh. I'm gonna have to look into that because it's gonna be the stainless steel on it, on the front, so it should be magnetic. Stainless steel is magnetic, right? I don't know. Our fridge is magnetic where it wasn't used didn't used to be magnetic oh yeah that's an idea that could be really fun i like that i'd never heard of that before but that sounds really nice when we get it in i'll have to test a magnet on it and then then i'll i'll look for something like that that'd be cool All right, so I think I'm going to stitch tonight so I have, so this thread is done, and then I think we'll call it for the evening. 
and we'll pick this up tomorrow. I might take Friday off again. Um, I took it off last week. Uh, I might take it off this week too if we get this guy done early. We just have a lot going on on that Friday, I think. So holidays are being weird. So um, I'll let you guys know though. We will see. We'll have to think about like what we're doing here next year since that's around the corner. This thread will get me right back up to his face. We will see. Ooh, and you guys stay tuned for um, some emails this week. We are going to have uh, some fun flash sales uh, these next uh, few days here. So keep an eye on. Uh, the website or your emails will be in more detail. This one goes out tomorrow, tomorrow morning. His little belly here is the same color green. So where the color, the fun colors will come in, we'll do all his little like triangles. Um, We'll play with color on those and his little teeth we need to give him some sharp little bangs. I like the I like the bright yellow that, that we use in here, so I'll probably uh probably do something like that again. I like this guy. I'm not like you know, a snake person by any means, but like, oh, he just looks so happy. <laughs> Ooh, Amy says I could do the his tongue in like the red Nishikito thread. That'd be kind of fun. Um, that Nishikito is that super shiny. I'm just I'm just gonna stick this up here so I can show you guys. Um, it's that shiny metallic thread that we used in the in the unicorn. So like all this super duper shiny stuff. That would be really fun to just add a little touch of that. So I do have I do have a red I think, and I haven't used like the colored ones very often that could be really cute gosh his teeth would be kind of fun like that too we could do his tongue and teeth like all full of um venom ready to go and then then use um just normal thread for for the rest of it i like that idea all right i can get a few more stitches out of here and then i think we'll call it for the evening That refrigerator is still quiet. I think this is the quietest it's ever been, the, like the length of time. So relaxing. <laughs> oh, man. All right, I'm doing his little belly here. I'm going to, like, do his, like, belly lines and the side line of it um, at the same time. Uh, because I want the side, this like line right here, I want those stitches to go over these lines. So these like horizontal lines look like they're tucked underneath the outlines. And like right here too, I'm going to just kind of tuck underneath this stitch on the outside there. Just so it looks like this line is going underneath. Um, and let's see, I think I can get, I think I can get these three stitches out for this little belly line. One. One, two, three. 
Okay, great. Let's weave in that end. And uh, we got that thread done. We'll have to cut a new piece tomorrow. Okay, there we are. See, decent start. I like uh, I like doing the outline first because it feels like I get a lot done, <laughs> in a, like a big chunk of it done. Whereas if we would have just done satin stitch, we would have gotten like his teeth done and maybe one of these done and it would have been like, oh, we hardly got anything done. But now we can feel like we got a whole pile done. So, all right, you guys, I think that's a good start on this. Uh, all right, so. Um, I think that's going well. Uh, based on that, I think we can get this done by Thursday, kind of like how we have been getting it done. So I think that's good. Ooh, Lynn says I had to make a more bias tape for my quilt binding on grandma's 1930s quilt. Oh, it's four inches short. Oh, so sad. <laughs> it's hard to guess with the scalloped edges. I've never bound a scalloped uh, edged quilt before. I would love to do one of those though. They're, they're just so pretty. <laughs> and then you'd have to do like a real on the bias binding, which is kind of fun to do as well. It's just stretchier and moves around those curves a little bit better. So awesome, you guys. So thanks again. Uh, check out that our uh, scented box, our Relax and Craft scented embroidery box uh, over on the website and use a coupon if you have it to, to order. And... Um, I guess I'll see you guys tomorrow. Tomorrow at 8.30 p.m. Central Time here. Uh, have a lovely, lovely evening. All right, good night, everyone.